I've just spent an hour doing squats and hip flexor work. I tried a whole bunch of different types of hip flexor work. I tried the hanging leg raises. I quickly found out that that was way too advanced for me. Uh, I was trying to tap my legs on the bar and it was basically taking everything out of me just to get a clean rep. So I somehow mastered three sets of five of that, but it was just too advanced. It was just, you know, I'm heaving myself up. There's no control. I'm just, that's not what the point of the exercise is. So I went back to what I, you know, have been doing last few days and that's the kettlebell normal business, you know, nothing too fancy. Uh, seems like I'm progressing well with that. So I can get 10 kilos now for 10 reps and then 10 sets of that. So 10 by 10 by 10, <clears throat> that's kind of going well. I've you know, improved a hell of a lot. And with that improvement comes also comfort in the squat. Today I did 160 and I did 10 singles. Uh, I really wanted to uh, try and work with speed today. I didn't want to, you know, put one ear on the bar and struggle through doubles today. I didn't really feel it in me for that kind of workout. So I did 160 for a whole bunch of uh, singles. And one thing that, you know, I, I really noticed as I was doing, you know, a set of that and a set of hip flexes going back and forth is that, and this is funny how it works, but in the eccentric phase of the squat, I don't know whether you guys uh, can relate to this, but when I'm going down in my squat and I can control the eccentric portion, specifically around the sticking point, if I can avoid or prevent the bar from accelerating or you know, dive bombing through that range with heavy ass weight, that tells me that the concentric is gonna be a piece of cake. So I don't know whether that's a normal thing for everybody, but one thing that I found out you know, around you know, the periods, the hot periods where I'm really kind of burning up in the hip is that I lose the ability to control the weight in the middle portion of the lift. So like that universal sticking point where the, the knees around kind of like 90 degrees, that kind of maybe between 90 degree knee bend and 90 degree and parallel to the floor, like around that kind of portion. That's where the hip pain is at its worst. But in the last week or so, I don't know how long it's been now, been a little while now, since doing the hip flexor work, I've gained control over that portion of the squat. And so when I'm going down with the 160, I have control. I feel like I can stop at any point. I can stop and chill out at any point. And then when you have that control in the eccentric, and then you go down and you get that little bounce from the from the ATG position, it just goes up, no worries. It's like the concentric is not the biggest portion, the biggest problem for the squat for me. It's all about the eccentric. If I can uh, control the eccentric, the concentric is gonna go up as well. That's what it seems. Um, I remember, a while ago now, when I tried the 220 squat and I failed that in, uh, in, in the gym, uh, I remember feeling really good and I remember getting the, the fire plates on and I remember having that feeling of, I cannot control the eccentric. Now, I'm very well aware that we are generally stronger in the eccentric than we are in the concentric. That's kind of like the norm. But for me in the squat, it feels like I don't know. I feel like I'm, it's much easier for me to do the concentric because the way it works for me, if I can't control the eccentric all that well, by the time I hit the ATG position, I'm out of position. And then it's like fighting all sorts of bad positions. So if I can get down to the hole in a really good position under control, the bar's going up. Uh, so it's not a, you know, I'm not trying to say that I am you know, stronger in the concentric. I just feel like the a bad eccentric phase is gonna completely ruin the concentric phase. So it's like, I have to have control of the eccentric. And I know a lot of people have, you know, had a lot of success with dive bombing. Basically, it seems like they don't even control at all. It's just boom. Number one, I feel like that's really unsafe for the joints because you're literally just bouncing on, on the ligaments and the tendons. Um, so I've always felt like I needed control under the bar. Uh, but it's almost like even if I dive bombed it, I feel like I wouldn't have all that much success with the concentric. So something that I noticed that all this hip flexor work that I'm doing, it's almost like I am a lot stronger through the through that sticking point. Now, in my mind, I'm trying to process that. And I'm thinking it's probably 
less to do with the hip flexor and more to do with the glute. And it's kind of like a, a byproduct of working the hip flexor is that the hip flexor is relaxing. And when you have a hip flexor that is relaxing, it's not producing so much, so, so much, I don't know what the word is, antagonizing forces to the glute. They're opposites. So if the hip flexor is going crazy, locking up, your glutes are gonna have a hard time to fire. So I feel like when I've unlocked the hip flexors, the glutes can kind of fire in the middle portion of the squat and I have control. Now, if you think about it, the hip flexors, I don't know, man. I feel like hip flexors have a lot to do in the ATG position in order for you to have that flat back. You know, if you, if you start butt wink and you start to round and you start to lose the integrity of the lower back, yes, okay, the rectus have something to do with that, but I feel like the hip flexors are the ones that are keeping your lumbar spine, you know, flat. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, just pull up a Google uh, page and type in psoas and see where it originates and where it inserts. And you will see, you will notice that basically it originates from the entire lumbar spine. It's like a fan muscle. It's got all these points all these vertebrae, uh, different vertebrae that, that it's coming from. So it's like a, you know, it's like that. If, if these are the bones of the back, each of these fibers is kind of like connecting to a different lumbar uh, process. So I think it goes from like T12 all the way to L5. So basically the entire length of the lower lumbar spine is uh, controlled by the, the, the psoas. So if you can imagine the psoas contracting is going to produce basically anterior pelvic tilt. Now, you don't want to be in anterior pelvic tilt just as a resting state because the, the, the thing is so tight and weak. You want to actively be able to hold that position, not just because it's so tight and weak, because then you can't control it. So it's kind of weird, like in, in the, in, in, from, from the top of the squat all the way to the bottom of the squat, there's like almost like a handover of responsibility as you go through the range. You know, the top portion is like external rotation, so it's, it's a lot of quads, basically quads and glutes. Uh, and then you get to the middle portion. I feel like it's even more glutes. I feel like it's less quads. But at the bottom of the squat, like in the ATG position, the primary hip extensor is the adductors. And so and this is why the people that squat ATG, they will feel a lot of adductor work and they'll feel a lot of doms through the adductors. I mean, that's my primary soreness that I feel from squats when I push them. Uh, it's just adductor soreness. Uh, so... You get to the hole, adductors and quads get you out of the hole. And then as you kind of progress through that hip extension, the adductors start to lose their uh, mechanical positioning to act upon the body. And so then the glutes become the main hip extensor uh, through the middle and the top portion. Um, so if, you, if you're struggling in that sticking point, which is going to be a mechanical thing anyway, right? Like this is the way the forces are. This is the way we're built. You're going to struggle in the sticking point, but if you're really kind of like feeling, okay, I'm a lot stronger around this sticking point, you know, there's like a glaring weakness in the sticking point, like even more so than normal, then probably look at your hip flexors and probably probably look at your glutes and, you know, just look at yourself in the mirror. If you're standing all freaking whack, your pelvis is completely unbalanced, anteriorly spilling your water at the front. If you imagine the, the, the pelvis is a cup, if you're spilling water at the front, that means the anterior part of you, the anterior chain, it's too tight and freaked out and you got to sort that out. So then it stops inhibiting the posterior chain. So it's kind of interesting how you can look at somebody, squat, uh, and tell which structures are weak purely by looking at them and how the body's behaving and, and where where their you know, struggles are and how does it look when they struggle? Do they just completely go into a vertical shin angle immediately as soon as they hit the, 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 the sticking point? What does that mean? And then you think to yourself, okay, take a picture of that and freeze that frame. Picture somebody going into an ATG position, popping out of the bottom, and then they're stopping in the halfway in the sticking point. What does that look like? If their shins are completely vertical like that, what is going on there? And just think to yourself, okay, in that moment, if I can fire any muscle in the body, which, which muscle group would I really, really want to really kick in here to sort this out? And when I see that, you know, completely vertical shins, arms going back, bent over in the squat. I can't stop thinking about imagining, okay, if I go glutes, more glute activation, that position will be sorted out and we'll be able to stand up. But a lot of people will say to you, oh, no, no, no. 
If you find yourself good morning in the squad, you need more quads. Well, look okay, picture yourself in that position with vertical, vertical shins. How does more quads get you out of that position? You might say, okay, but more quads will prevent you from getting into that position. That's probably a good argument. But in my mind, I'm like, what's lacking in that posture is not more hip extension, uh, not more knee extension. We need hip extension. We're bent over. That's how, I mean, that's how I think about it. And I've, I've gone back and forth, back and forth with a whole bunch of people about this. Lots and lots of videos about this. Some people say, oh, if you, if you do the stripper squat, it has to be weak quads. And I'm like, I'm not so convinced by that. Because I feel like in that type of posture, we have maximized the quad uh, power. Completely maxed it. And we're trying to complete the lift with more quads. That's why your knees are more extended than their hips. But if, you, if your hips are more stronger, you would never be in that position, ever. Think about it. You would never be in that position because you wouldn't allow yourself to be overcome like that. I don't know. I mean, that's how I think about it. Like, you know, because I'm trying to make sense of, you know, why do I feel so much stronger in, in the middle portion of the squat? And why am I more upright with hip flexor work? Because I'm getting more glute activation. It has to be. I'm not doing anything for the quads right now, nothing. So I'm getting more glute activation, I'm staying more vertical, and it's going against the, the, the entire belief of what's out there. Quads, 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 quads. I don't know about that. It's interesting. Anyway, guys, appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.